All right, this is going to continue um, confidence intervals. Mm -hmm. This time we're talking about estimating the population proportion for a binomially distributed random variable. So what I've written over here on this side of the screen is the sampling distribution for the p-hats. The sampling distribution for the p-hats, remember, is approximately normally distributed with a uh, mean equal to p, this population proportion, and the standard deviation or the standard error of the square root of p times q divided by n. Now remember that p hat is the sample proportion and this comes from the number of successes observed divided by the number of trials and q hat is simply 1 minus p hat. Now p hat is going to be used to estimate the population parameter p, um, the population um, proportion. So in order to do this we must first of all meet the binomial assumptions. So we have to have a fixed number of trials, the trials are independent, there's two categories only for the outcomes and the probabilities must remain constant on each trial. And then we also must conform to the normality assumption. Remember that the normality assumption is that our n times p and our n times q are both greater than or equal to 5. And <clears throat> that um, is basically in order to apply the sampling distribution. So if we are talking about this, the confidence interval is going to be remain unchanged. It's going to be um, based upon the normal distribution, and therefore it's going to look very much like it did when we were doing confidence intervals for the population mean mu. Now we're just going to be using p hat instead of um, the sample means, we're using sample proportions. And the um, margin of error, the e this time around, is going to look very much like it did before. It's going to have a z, right? Our critical value is a z because our proportions are distributed normally, so we have our z alpha over 2 there. And then we're going to multiply that by the standard error, right? And that's a standard error before was sigma divided by the square root of n, or s divided by the square root of n if we ta we're talking the population standard deviation being unknown. When we're dealing with the um, standard error for the sampling distribution of proportions, that is going to be the square root of p times q divided by the square root of n. And because we don't know p and q, what we do is we substitute in p hat and q hat. And that forms our margin of error. So as you see, it's no different than the confidence intervals that we were doing in any of the other sections here. So we're going to um, take a look at this example. A survey of uh, at a supermarket showed that 204 out of 300 shoppers use sense off coupons regularly find a 99 percent confidence interval for the true population proportion of shoppers that use sense off coupons so first off i'm going to write down here that my p hat is equal to the number of shoppers that use the sense off coupons 204 out of the number of shoppers um, that were surveyed 300 that forms my p hat now of course q hat is going to be 1 minus the p hat, 204, divided by 300. And if we take the complement of that, that means we would have 96 out of 300 for our q hat. Now, if you use the actual fractions or re reduce form, you always have an exact value. But if you go ahead and make them into a decimal, you want to keep enough decimal places in order to have these um, be a good estimation. So you should keep at least three decimal places. Now, as it turns out, the proportion here is equivalent to 0.68, which is an exact number, which would make this one point <clears throat> excuse me, 0 0.32. And so now that we have those values um, as decimals, we could use the decimals. But remember again, if you have to um, round it off at some point, make sure you keep enough de decimals to be significant. Now, if we're going to do a 99% confidence interval, that means that our alpha is equal to 1 minus our level of confidence, 0 0.99. And that means that our alpha is equal to 0 0.01. And that, of course, means that our um, alpha over 2 is going to be equal to 0 0.005. And then, remember what we're doing here is we're finding on our z's, 
to find the critical values, right? We're finding the area that's over here of 0 0.005 and over here 0 0.005 and in the middle puts 99%. And we're looking for this Z over here and this C over here called the critical values. So our probability of a Z being less than our negative z is what we'll be finding being equal to 0 0.00 and then 5. So when we go to our table to look this up, remember if we look it up in a table, we can use our t table and we're looking at a one tail area of 0 0.005 or a two tail area of 0 0.01 and remember when we use a t table to find a z score we're looking at large and so we see the 2.576. Now remember the critical value, um, some people consistently use the 2.575 to be this value. If we get look it up in our um, T table, it's 2.576. If we use our calculator to get it, it's 2.576. And if we look it up in the Z table, that's where it says it's 2.575. So make sure when you tell me on a test what it is that you've actually told me where you got it from. So I know that you're what you were doing and how you got that. Now, of course, the next thing that I want to do is I want to make my margin of error. So my margin of error is equal to my z-score, 2.576 in this case. And then I'm going to multiply that times the square root of p-hat, which is 0.68, times q-hat, 0.32. And then I'm going to divide it by the sample size n. And in this case, my sample size was 300. And this will be my margin of error. So I'm going to start inside the roots to uh, 0.68 times 0.32. And then I'm going to divide that by 300. And then I'm going to take the square root of that. And then once I have that, I'm going to multiply it by 2.576. <coughs> Pardon me. And that's going to give me 0 0.06. Nine, three, seven, six, nine, approximately. And I'm going to keep all of those decimals. Now in order to make my interval, my p hat plus or minus my e makes my interval. So in other words, I'm going to take my sample proportion, 0.68, and I'm going to add subtract point and then 0, 6, 9, 4. And so I have an interval at which I'm going to put P, right, is in between this, the population proportion is between 0.68 minus this and 0.68 plus this. So 0.68 minus 0 0.0694, and that gives me 0 0.6106, which I'm going to round off to 0.611, and then 0.68 plus 0 0.0694. Four. And that, of course, is going to give me 0.7494, which I will round off to 0.749. And that will be my interval. Now, some people prefer to see these as percentages, so they'll put them as 61.1% to 74.9%. Remember, round off error in the um, in binomial is three decimals, and that's why I've given the three decimals here and here. And either one of these is acceptable. You will always see me pretty much give the um, decimal representations and not percentages. That's just my preference. So now let's take another look at um, another example, a couple of examples, so you could practice these. So <clears throat> let's do the next one together. And I'll go ahead and do this fairly slowly so that you can try to do it on your own. So in a random sample of 250 TV viewers in a certain area, 190 had, a certain con uh, had seen a certain controversial program. Find a 90% confidence interval for the true population proportion. So the first thing I should find would be... Okay, if you said p hat, that's correct. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find out what my p hat is. Well, that would be the number of successes. That would be 190, right? Out of the total number surveyed, that would be 250. Now, <clears throat> once I have that, I also would like q hat. 
And so Q hat is 1 minus P hat, so 1 minus 190 over 250. So that would be 60. Let's see. No, not 60. Um, let's see. That would be, yeah, 60 out of 250. <clears throat> now in turning these to decimals, um, if we do the decimal approximation, we get 0.76 for P hat. <clears throat> and we would get 0.24 for Q hat. So those are our um, population uh, or our sample proportion and the uh, complement of the sample proportion. Now alpha is equal to one minus the confidence level of 90%, so 0.9, and so that gives me 0.1. And that of course puts my alpha over two at being 1.05, um, sorry, 1.1 divided by 2. So that's my alpha over 2. So remember, I need to find my critical values. All right, here we go here, and my z over here, and my z over here. And this is going to put 90% right here in the middle, and it puts 0 0.05 in this tail and 0 0.05 in the lower tail. And it's the lower tail that I use to find that critical value because I'm doing an inverse normal to find the probability that a z is less than that negative z is equal to 0 0.05. <clears throat> and so I go and I use my um, t table or my z table or my calculator to find that. I'm going to go ahead and use my t table because it's the easiest thing to do in my opinion. So 0 0.05 in one tail, notice that 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 in two tails, right? Two tail area is alpha, one tail area is point, um, alpha over two. So it's that second to the last column. I go down to my large because in a t table my large is represented by that and I see the 1.645 that hopefully you're getting familiar with by this time. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to do my margin of error. So my margin of error is going to look like what? You tell me. Okay, so if you said it's going to look like Z, 1.645, times the standard error for the sampling distribution of proportions, which looks like the root of, and we're going to use P hat, and we're going to use Q hat multiplied, and then we're going to divide that by the square root of the sample size, 250. And that's going to give us our margin of error. So I, oops, not 75, that's 76. So I start out with 0.76 multiplied by 2.24, divide it by 250, take the square root of that answer, and then I multiply that by 1.645. And so now what I have is approximately, and this is 0 0.0444, and then um, 33. <clears throat> so that's my margin of error, and now I have to create my interval, p hat plus or minus that margin of error. So my p hat being 0.76 and then plus or minus, and I'm going to keep a couple more decimals, right? 0 0.044 4 is how many I should keep, and then I'll keep the one extra out here so round off doesn't get a, get a hold of me. So 0 0.76 minus 0 0.0444, 4. that's going to give me 0 0.715, or approximately, when it's rounded correctly, 0.716. And then less than, and this is my population proportion that belongs in this, and 0.76 plus 0 0.0444. <clears throat> and then when I add it, rounding it correctly from 0 .0, uh, 0.0044 to just 0 0.804, that's my interval. All right, now you probably should try the next one on your very own, and I'll make one last video to see if you got help you see if you got that one right. So the one I'm discussing is the study being an estimate of proportion of voters. Okay, so I'm going to end now.